Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this with one hand here. Uh, got my string line set up, put a nail here on my fascia board, my tail end on the corner, ran the string all the way down to the other end. And I bent my nail over to get my string so it's just kissing the square. And if I go down each tail, and if you look down the board, man, it looks straight. So what I did is I didn't put my timber lock screws up top yet. I, I just screwed it to the, the ears. And what I did is just loosened all these and, and adjusted in and out. The, the wall is really straight <clears throat> on the building in plumb. And I didn't want to screw that up by pushing and pulling things. So I just moved my tails. First piece of gable fascia is up. And this cut here, I have a little nub underneath. Kind of hard to see with the sun right here. We're gonna cut that off and it's my first eight foot piece. Gone, nice and flush here. Straight fascia, love it. You know, I thought trusses, putting trusses up was the most rewarding day, but I think this is because the building just really starts to come together. Gonna have a little bit of work here. I think what I'll probably do, um, it's not perfectly straight. Uh, that top one right here looks like it's sticking out just a little bit. So I think I'll probably have to shave that, but otherwise these are pretty close. Okay, overhangs, day two is complete. There you can kind of get a good shot of the eave end, how straight that is. They were really crooked before up to, some of the tails were up to like a half inch off. The gable end is not, not too bad right now. Got a little bit of a bow right here. I'm gonna put a, use some shims to fix those. I don't really wanna pull and push the building too much because the walls are fairly close to being plumb. And there's the overhang on the other side, nice and straight. And the gables got eight feet run up on both sides. Uh, the back, the terrain is a little uneven in the back, so didn't feel comfortable with the scaffolding. Um, plus the scaffolding is a ton of work to move two sections if you're stacking them. Uh, so tomorrow I'm just going to go rent a little man lift and get the back overhangs done with that. It's going to save me a lot of time and energy. I think I can get it done in one day. So I need to get the end purlins ran. So we'll do that. At least get the the two end ones here and the two end ones down there ran. The, the middle ones I can pick up later, but I wanna get that with the machine so I can get, get these run up all the way. Uh, I think it'll be well worth the money spent. So check in with you guys tomorrow and hopefully we'll have the overhangs done.
overhangs are complete. <clears throat> Ended up renting a little piece of equipment. Boy, was that a time saver and an energy saver. Now, to see if the roof is square. Wish me luck. Gosh, I think this is day three uh, for overhang slash roofing. Uh, and I guess technically the overhangs are done. Uh, so today, today is the day of truth because it is time to put sheathing up. So that'll really give us an idea on how square the roof is. I did a preliminary check yesterday and uh, I was very happy. I think we're within an eighth of an inch or so on both sides. Uh, and if that's the case, when I put the sheeting up, uh, I'll be very happy. So couldn't sleep last night thinking about it, thinking about how I wanted to do the roofing, how I wanted to get started with things. Um, so, I did a little push-pull uh, try yesterday, and the building is just small enough where it doesn't really move much. So, you know, I watch these guys online, R&R uh, &R builders, with uh, Kyle and Greg, and they push and pull things, but their buildings are always bigger. So, these small buildings, man, they're pretty tight. So I'm a little bit nervous about if my measurements were wrong uh, and I'm off, how I'm gonna fix it. But let's hope we don't have to worry about it. So we'll see. I'll give you guys another update here once we get the sheathing on site and let you know what we find. <laughs> 